Do you want to know how to make the most fabulous cookies for this holiday season? Do you want to know the secret to something that looks like that? Do you want to eat that? I know I do. I would love to eat about a dozen of those cookies right now. Y'all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Virginia Willis, and this is Cookbooks with Virginia. And nearly every Friday, at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Cookbooks with Virginia, and I have, it's the best and most favorite part of my week. I'm able to have on friends, new friends, old friends, folks that I like, folks that I admire, and this week, super excited. I'm featuring the book Cookies by Jesse Shefchuk, and y'all, this book is awesome. You're gonna love it. You can win a copy, and I've got Jesse here today, and I can't wait to talk to him all about it. Let's bring him in. Hello. Hey, thank you so much for joining me this morning. No, thank you so much for asking me. I'm like very honored to be on your show. Oh, it's so cool. You have got the greatest. I love your book. Your book is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I had a really good art team. So thank you. Y'all, I love that. So I have to tell you, we were talking about it beforehand because, you know, we have to get together a little bit earlier and make sure that the tech works and all that kind of stuff. And I said the same thing to Jesse and he immediately, I just thought that was so beautifully humble and kind that he, you immediately deflect to this great art team, but your recipes, you made these, you made these wonderful recipes. I know it. Yes, yes. I guess it was a it was a big team effort. It is a cookbook is indeed a big team effort. So so for those of you, you and I, we were laughing because you and I have like talked and done some projects virtually over the years back when you were with Tasty. And so will you please tell uh, folks a little bit about yourself and how you have come to have this incredible new cookie book? Sure. Yeah, I guess I'll start with that. So uh, a handful of years ago, I was at like BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed's Tasty. And I wrote this book that was a contributor cookbook. It was 75 food people, chefs, stylists, celebrities um, for Pride Month. They were all queer and they wrote these short stories and mm -hmm. recipes and you were in it. Yes. Uh, and, yeah, thank you. So that was really cool. We raised uh, $50,000 for GLAAD. And then I guess after that, it was like, okay, um, like I have a lot of passion, ghostwriting and like helping tell other people's stories. But I felt like I should take on something of my own. So that's where this book came into play. It was like an opportunity to kind of like showcase my own point of view mm -hmm. and my style in a way that I haven't necessarily in the past. Yeah. So that was really exciting. And that's kind of where this came from. It's so cool because you're right. Like when you're a food editor at a major media company, it used to be magazines. Now it's like media in general because there's, there's often there's print, not always. There's digital. There's sometimes there's books, sometimes there's not. You know, there's magazines, not. But it's not always your style, right? Because you're you're re, you're reflecting the style of the media company, and you're definitely a part of that. But that's so awesome, right? And and also like when you're dealing with a compilation of recipes from a, from a ton of different cookbook authors and chefs. So y'all can win a copy, y'all. You can win a copy of Jesse's books. You're gonna go to, I'll put the instructions up. You're gonna go to um, my the Instagram feed and you're gonna look for this cover of this book and you're gonna like me and you're gonna like Jesse and you're gonna enter to win. And we're gonna give out a copy um, on Monday morning. And it is perfect timing because it is, it is like high cookie season, right? I know I'm like preparing myself for this influx of like baking questions and stuff coming my way. Like I'm ready. I know. Well, what is it though? Because cookies, cookies are like the sort of a gateway drug, don't you think for baking? I mean, because they really are often just like one bowl and there you go. I think they're just very like familiar and like comforting and accessible. And it's kind of like the thesis of the book was that, you know, this is like a very like, artful book and there's like some flavors that are like I don't know like a bit unusual or like quirky and it was like what is a vessel that people feel comfortable and familiar mm -hmm. with that we can like inject a ton of fun into so I like that hearing you say that no it's awesome so y'all this is crazy so there's a couple things like first of all you know you always hear blah 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 mouth-watering photography well damn it Jesse you got it because I opened that and I saw that photograph and I was like literally I felt my <laughs> I felt my mouth salivate like I was like oh my god I want that cookie it's like golden yummy sweetness and chocolate yeah, so the, the photographer, 
Yeah, it's Chelsea Kyle. And Chelsea Kyle is just like insanely talented. I've been a fan of her work for years. And it was like a dream to have her shoot this book. And she was down. And yeah, I was just very lucky to work with her. That's so cool. Yes. And it's so wonderful. And you know, as so y'all, Jesse is a is a stylist and he styles for a lot of different publications and stuff. But you know, it's like the the photographer the team that puts it really is a team that puts a cookbook together. And when you're dealing with someone that's like professional stylist like yourself, like it really, you know, it's a different it's a different place, right? Because you know what happens behind the scenes. Totally, yeah. And I think also like controlling the budget of the cookbook it was like important of me to invest in time like get a big enough team so we're not rushing and there's like room for creativity so i think that also like plays into the whole like like cookbook author slash stylist thing it's like a different way of working kind of no i think so because you're definitely right you know what it takes to sort of put it together and y'all he's done this amazing job so I'll, i'll hold up the book we've got introduction let's make cookies ingredient and equipment but this i have to say is like one of my favorite things the way that it is laid out so we've got chocolatey boozy fruity and then coming over here tart spiced smoky and savory that's so smart on how to divide up cookies yeah i thought it was like uh like I like to kind of have like one word, like what am I in the mood for? Just like this one word kind of encapsulating the flavor. And I love it because um, it is, I mean, it is highly specialized, right? Like cookies. I mean, that's pretty, you know, like even like breads or something, but just the fact that you're able to, cause you kind of do you're like, Oh man, I want some in chocolatey or I want some in fruity or, or, you know, but, but so these are, they're what I would say like chocolate chunk oatmeal bars. They're familiar but you've definitely done some innovation with them. Yeah, like I, I didn't want them to be like chefy, but more kind of like playful or like, Yes. I guess like I just want someone to feel really cool when they make it, whatever that right. means. No, 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 that's perfect. You know, I love that because there's this thing like, you know, there's a, there's a big range between just like, you know, opening a box, right? Opening a box and then like, handcrafted artisan hand dried blah 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 right like there's a whole chefing it up like crazy and then like you know really lowest common denominator there's so much room in there for like mere mortals like that don't have to have food training like we do or having worked in a restaurant or something like that and i feel like you've done this with your their accessible ingredients but you've got some um, interesting flavors you know um, Elizabeth Faulkner, the pastry yes, chef? Yes, 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 yes. I grew up with her cookbook, Demolition Desserts, and I yep. feel like that was also a perfect example of like whimsy playfulness, but never like like pushing it too far or pretentious or, yeah, I feel like she's a huge inspiration for like kind of- this Oh, I love yeah. Elizabeth, and you know, you're right, and I think that that's it. There's not, um, and you know what it is in a, in a way, it's like with her, I would say so, and then therefore with you, it's like there's a comfort within yourself that you don't feel like you have to prove your culinary prowess by using some crazy ass ingredients, right? Mm, yeah, I love her work. I think she's so cool. And so Yay. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay, so did you, grow, did you grow up making cookies? I mean, how did this cookie love come to be? Not cookies specifically, but so when I have a sister and when we were both really young, I, my mom quit her job and she started an at-home candy business. Uh-huh. She's always like a food person. And so I grew up seeing just like, like my kitchen turn into a candy factory. And I was interested in, I think, culinary. So I studied culinary. I never studied bakery as like my rebellion. And then as I got older, I kind of like went back to what my mom did and was interested in sweets. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Because it really is. Um, And I think though that those times, like I remember like my first, my first recipes were probably cookies, right? My cooking with my mom. Well, that's not true. <laughs> my first recipe was a biscuit. That was, that's, that's for certain. And then, I mean, there's pictures of me making biscuits at three. But I remember cookies were probably the first thing that I was allowed to make by myself. Hmm within, you know, sort of kind of by myself. All right. I have to tell you that, um, you know, pecan sandies are a classic Southern um, cookie. Um, Pecans are a classic Southern nut. Georgia produces like more pecans than any state in the nation. And your pecan sandies are like the fanciest, most beautiful pecan sandies I've ever seen in my life. Congratulations, sir. 
Thank you. you know, I like, they almost have like a leopard print when you cut them. They're beautiful. They're, I mean, really, like I when I just like kind of picked up the book and I was flipping through and I saw that the photo caught my eye. And then when I looked and saw the title of the cookie recipe, I was like, oh, my God, those are the most beautiful pecan sandies. I know, Bobby Sheely, that's right. Don't they look beautiful? This is my friend, Bobby. Thanks. So aren't they, aren't they just gorgeous? So we got you get that by rolling them in like a, um, a cinnamon sugar. Yeah, it's like putting so much cinnamon in that rolling. It almost like like stains the outside that brown and makes that really nice kind of like a uh, contrast. So what's so great about that is you've, you've elevated it, right? You've just, you've changed it. It's made it a little bit more dramatic, but it's just something as simple as rolling it in cinnamon, right? It's nothing yeah. crazy. It's not some obscure expensive ingredient that you had to order off the internet for a million dollars. You know what I mean? It's, it's just cinnamon. Totally. Yeah. So like, per yeah, it's the kind of the thesis there. So what do you think? Um, so my, I mentioned before we got on the show today about my friend Claire and she's a stylist. And I think that I think that sometimes um, not that the style leads the substance, but I think that when you're a stylist and you have the your the eye, like what you want it to look like. I mean, obviously, the flavor is always important, but when you I think it's almost like a gift like what you have, you know, to. You're, you're always thinking about how to make it look more beautiful. Is that, would that be an accurate? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I guess working in food media, like art is always the last thought. It's like, and it's always like the last step. So it's often rushed, I feel. Uh -huh. And with this book. So when I submitted the proposal, I had 15 photos already shot as tests. And it was always like art and the words were always like working at the same time. That's one. Yeah. So I kind of like knew with every cookie is like, what's its story? What's its personality? Like, how will we present it? So it's kind of like thinking that way through it. That is so cool. That is so cool. All right. Red wine, chocolate brownies. And you have everything. So you have your recipes um, in in normal sort of American style measurements. And then you also have it weighed in metric. So bravo and good for you. Thank you. Yes. No, that was. Yeah. There's like a. I learned a lot about uh, how Americans like uh, measure a cup of flour. I know. Well, it it's, cra it's crazy, crazy, right? It is crazy. It was like I'd send out cross tests and I'd be like, why does it look like that? And I'd be like, oh, they like measure and they like slam the flour. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Isn't that funny? It's so funny. And um, and then like, you know, it's really good. It kind of goes back to like sort of how your mama taught you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Like either like sifting the flour ahead of time and then measuring or packing it in the cup, you know, and then obviously that's a ton more flour. So it is funny when you do the group testing and you wind up with your recipe and it's like, you know, four different testers and four different radically different results. Yes, totally. Yeah. I could like, write a huge long form essay about like a cup of flour now <laughs> it, like kept me up at night i know and 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 sadly what's happened is that um that the people are, are people don't have scales right like mm. people are i think that like people even people that sort of actively like to cook um in general americans in general just like are into the cups not into the scale yeah we're just so used to it yeah yeah. All right. So you have a cookie that you would like to, would you share a cookie, one of your cookie recipes with us? Yeah, I, okay. I have everything ready to quickly make. Um, actually, it's the cover recipe. I think like no one actually knows what this cover is because it's very like nondescript, but it's a lavender chocolate chunk cookie. So it's like a really basic chocolate chip cookie, except it's chopped chocolate. And then you infuse lavender into the butter before you mix it all together. So I have everything ready to go and I could just like, Quickly that show. would be awesome and that is so cool and like infusing that lavender because you know if you put too much lavender in it's too much but just enough mm. lavender is really lovely yeah it gets like soapy otherwise it's like a really uh -huh. fine line yeah uh -huh. yeah but it's, Yay. Uh, it's this one cool okay i'm gonna join i'm gonna join you okay i'm gonna move my my big ikea chair out of the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> okay we're good so i can actually show you Awesome. So this is like what it looks like, basically. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. My there you laptop. go. As long as it didn't like, didn't go in your laptop or anything. It is, it's the dedication to this craft. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. Been, 
So you melt the butter and you add the lavender and you just let it sit kind of like a tea um, huh? for like 20 minutes. So this is going to actually flavor the butter, but not too much. Okay. You don't get any of like, it. Yeah, you don't get like any astringency or anything. And then I just pour this into a bowl. Let me... mm -hmm. Just through like a fine mesh sieve. Okay. And then I kind of like push on it too to try to get all those little bits out. Uh -huh. Cool. And then this is like the only special step that we're going to do here. Okay. So that's like the only unusual thing we're dealing with. So then into this, it's just mixing everything together. So your sugars go in. I got brown sugar and I got white sugar. So the brown sugar is going to add like chew. It's going to add like mm -hmm. a caramel flavor. And then you just whisk this together. And it'll be like kind of sandy like this at first. Uh-huh. But so if you keep whisking, it kind of like changes consistency and it gets almost like, I guess like elasticity. Uh -huh. Elastic. Yeah, yeah. And so that's actually going to help kind of develop uh, like a smooth, somewhat shiny top that like cracks a bit because you're like actually starting to dissolve the sugar. Right. So you want to take it to that point. That's so nice. And I love that silver crackle. It's one of my favorite things on top of brownies. Ooh, like brownie cookies, I think. Yeah, like brownie, brownie cookies. cookies. Yeah, that shiny, that shiny part. And it's nice because, um, okay, so you've got the light brown sugar and the and the sugar. Okay, and you've got the eggs in there or going in there. Yeah, so you can tell it's kind of like lightened in color a bit and it's uh -huh. been more glossy. So then straight into here, I have an entire tablespoon of vanilla which is also like a weird thesis in the book is that like i feel like in the past people are like teaspoon of vanilla or half teaspoon of vanilla i'm like people want more so just bring it for it yeah bring it so a big heaping tablespoon and then we got two eggs in here all right y'all if you want to win a copy of this great book that jesse is making this cookie from you're going to go to my instagram feed and you're going to like me and like jesse and you'll see it all right there and um, and we are going to, we'll have a winner on Monday. All right. So this is like the base. And then also another thing is that maybe like 75% of the cookies in the book don't require an electric mixer. Perfect. And it's kind of this technique. And for me, I think it's because I don't like cakey cookies. Yeah, I don't. So like almost like the less air I can incorporate into this while still leavening them. Right, right. The better. Right. So yeah, I use all chemical leaveners. So to here, flour. And then just all your other dry ingredients. So salt. And then baking soda and baking powder. And the baking and soda and baking powder it's like maybe slightly higher than most recipes. Okay. And that's because it is like a dense non aerated dough. So mm -hmm. it's going to like puff up in the oven, but then almost collapse back. Yeah. And that's how you get it. Well, part of that too, y'all is probably uh, because you notice a lot of cookies will start out with room temperature butter that is um, soft, but firm, but this is, this butter is melted. So Jesse knows this, of course, like the butter reacts differently when it's melted in a cookie. And that's how you get that sort of those wonderful like nooks and crannies. Totally. Yeah. And it was like during developing, like whenever this is like a weird thing, whenever I made a cookie and it like didn't crack or do that kind of ripply, I'd be like, it's not good. I'd start over. Oh yeah. No, it's a lot of, um, testing is like a, when you have in your mind, like this one thing that you're looking for, you know, and a little bit of knowledge, like you have, like just from recipe development, you're like, Oh man, it's got it. I need a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that. So this, okay. This is the dough. Okay. So I guess it's a bit softer than some other. I saying, of yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And then to here, we have eight ounces of chocolate, which mm -hmm. I guess is also a bit more than a lot of recipes. And then this is it. This is the dough. I don't chill this dough. A lot of people ask, like, can I chill them? And I say, 
yes, but just when you come, it's time to like portion them. Yeah, let the dough sit out for maybe like fifteen minutes. Right, you want to you want to bake at room temperature. You don't want to bake it chilled, so that totally. they'll so they'll spread a little bit more. Yeah, that's like maybe one of the main questions I get is like, should I chill it? And like, I don't want to be mean, but I'm like, well, is it baked chilled? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's good. Well, so Matthew, who's a great chef in and of his own, he says, um, does it give it better chew? So Matthew, are you talking? Oh, you were talking about the like cooking the chilled cookie. You know, it would, right? Like if you're, I mean, not chilled. If you're, um, if everything's room temperature when it goes in the oven, I feel like it would be chewier. Yeah, it would like, um, basically, if it's all room temperature, it emulsifies easier, so your dough's mm -hmm. gonna get more likely to have that glossy mm -hmm. top and also since the fat is already a bit warm right it spreads quicker so like if your fat is cold basically the outside sets before the inside spreads so sometimes yeah. you can end up with like the hockey puck effect you know yeah no that's yeah. always so weird when cookies are super hard on the outside yeah it's either too much flour or it's that mm -hmm. something was too cold yeah. All right. So, um, so I like in your recipe, you say chop. So uh, you, you like it, you like to, pr you prefer that folks chop their chocolate over chocolate chips. I use both, but I use more chopped, but I almost think of chopped chocolate as like an ingredient versus the add-in because when it melts, right. it's like the force of melting, like pulls the dough down. Yeah. yeah. And then also when you chop it, you have these like tiny little shards and then bigger chunks. And so you wind up with, the ch it's not like the consistency of the chips, right? You have all these like different nuances that in the cookie from the different shapes of chocolate. Yeah, totally. Because chips are like designed not to melt, essentially. Right. So right. Okay. You, I, you, you've got, I see you've got a scoop, and this makes eighteen large cookies. I love the uh, I love the size. So then, since this is lavender, I do get a bit fancy. You don't have to do this, but I got my giant bucket of melon. Uh huh. This is, like, this is like my personal investment last year. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I sprinkle the tops, and then these go into the oven. So I just bake six at a time. Okay. And I do use a large cookie scoop, but if you don't have one, uh, one fourth cup measure. You can just pack the dough in and then take it out and roll it. And it's the perfect size. Oh, that's cool. So do they do they spread much when they when they cook? How big do they get? I'll show you the magic of life. Okay, there you go. Yay, look how ready you are. I'm loving this. Uh, yeah, I've been here before. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha. Boy, howdy. So these are... Damn, look at that cookie. I want that cookie so bad. Yeah, so they're like kind of crispy on the outside, but like they have a lot of chocolate in them. No, sure. Okay, we've yeah. got a couple questions though. Hold on, let me see. So, uh... So Jimmy is asking, I'm going to rewatch and make it this weekend. Do you prefer a chocolate? So in this cookie, in, mm. in this cookie, do you have a specific chocolate that you like? And then sort of in general, can you, can you talk about any chocolates that you like? Sure. I, um, I honestly like, I think Baker's chocolate, the semi-sweet one is really solid. Yeah. Um, I like the Ghirardelli baking bars too. I think mm -hmm. both of those are four ounces. So I need two bars for this. Yeah. The only thing is, like when chocolate gets like really high quality and fancy, I feel wow. like they make fevs, which are like, you know, the mm -hmm. big chunks for people watching. And those, I just would recommend chopping them up too, because they are a bit too big for a cookie to handle that I've seen. Yeah, 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 I know. And there's different, you know, like it, chocolate isn't just chocolate, right? I mean, we all know about like the single bar and the single Appalachian and things like that. But you're exactly right. Baker's chocolate semi sweet is it's a it's good, good. It's a good solid chocolate. And I yeah. like um, I have gotten where I, um, you know, I always try to use ingredients that most that people can find. Totally, yeah. And you you don't have to like order like. your Valrona. Like I love Valrona, duh, no doubt, mm -hmm. no doubt. But but I know that there's. I mean, for me to go get Cayabo Valrona, like some of those higher end. Couture chocolates. Like I have to go to the restaurant supply store. I have to go. Yeah, to same. Babies. I'm in New York and I don't know where I'd get it in my neighborhood. Right. Either. So yeah. you know, it's just fair to work with people. If you're trying to get people like sort of like up their cookie game, like what's something that you can do? Like get your ingredients at the grocery store and still elevate your cookie game. Yeah, totally. I think Baker's. I get my like a Target nearby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, we have a um. So we have a, someone love a salted cookie. Yes, indeed. Um, and then uh, Matt, uh, uh, Matthew Deaton is actually, uh, what do you think about browning the butter since it's already melted? Mm, okay, I'm going to sit down for this one. Okay, this <laughs> is 
Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, this is a um complicated question. Okay, so butter is not just fat; it's like mm-hmm. it's like twenty percent or something water. So, like a lot of people will make brown butter and then swap it into a recipe that just uses regular butter, and like your cookie Bad. will your cookie yeah, your cookie will turn out like um like not it doesn't rise as much right. um, and it's a bit denser because it doesn't have that steam so the complicated answer is you can use brown butter but for every stick of butter compensate by adding two tablespoons of water to your brown butter you yes, are exactly and- yes you are exactly correct that is so i am so glad that you um pointed that out to people i just i just wrote something last week about brown mm. butter and like i love that kind of deep dive on it and you know yeah. you understand that if you brown it there's no more water yeah it's translating like butter- it to the ingredient list is is it's- another step and yay you that's awesome it is yeah it's like a lot of people, a lot of people ask that. And I'm always just like, well, it's complicated. Right. No. And I, we made Thanksgiving rolls yesterday and, um, and we added the dry, the non-fat dry milk powder. And for years mm-hmm. I didn't understand about why to do that. Right. Like my grandmother used it. And I can remember thinking like, I don't, when I got all chefy, like when I went off to cooking school and I just had enough knowledge to be dangerous, but not enough knowledge to be knowledgeable. Um, it was like, why doesn't she use real milk or why doesn't she use cream? Right. Well, the reality, you don't, you can't, you're, you're not going for the fat. You're going for the milk solids. You're going for the casins. You're going for the protein. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, so that was what sort of took me down that path of learning more, uh, learning more about, about brown butter. Well, thank you so much for making those cookies. My mother who was here yeah. with me this weekend has said that she's already like, said that we're going to make them. So I've got a couple of questions. We're already done, but I've got a couple of questions that I'd love to ask you. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, cool. So um, so one of my favorite parts of the week is getting to, to, to meet people, talk to people about their cookbooks. Who is someone's cookbook that you've read lately? Um, you must see so many cookbooks. Who is a cookbook? Who's a, someone's cookbook that you've seen lately that you've liked other than your own? Mm. Um. Okay, baking books this season. I love Valerie's book, Valerie Lomas, Life is What You Bake It. I think um, I made the accordion biscuits and they were so good because it's funny because when it comes to biscuits, I feel like I'm like illiterate. Like I don't know how to make good biscuits. So I really, really love that recipe. I'll have Um, to check those out. Is it sort of like a accordion? Is it like they're just like flattened and like put together? Kind of, it's almost like a lamination process when she like kind of like pats, 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 and like cuts and then stacks and then pats, 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 you know? Uh huh. Yeah, and they turned out really, really nice. So I love that. There's also, this is weird, but there's a book coming out by like A24 Films, um, which is kind of like this really artsy film place, and it's called Horror Caviar. And it's basically <laughs> like this book of recipes from like, um, like different spooky movies. Uh It's like so fun and so weird. I'm really looking forward to seeing like the art of it. Oh, that's cool. No, it's fun, right? Because there's so many levels of art to a cookbook. There's the recipes, there's the photography. And then sometimes when you get like a super creative situation, people can really like, like be free about it. That's, that's super cool. So on that same note, um, well, let me ask you, let me ask you one question real quick. Um, Bobby is asking about those cookies. Can you make in advance and freeze? What's your thought on freezing those chocolate chip cookies that you just made? Yes. So you can make the dough and then portion it into the balls. Yeah. And then um, freeze the balls on a sheet tray covered in like parchment so it doesn't uh-huh. stick. And then what I would do is just take the whole tray out when you want to bake and then defrost them at room temperature. So they they can be a bit chilled, but you don't want them to be frozen because that's yeah. when you run into the situation when the outside cooks before the middle and you might end up right. with like a little puck. So yes, just bring it to room temperature before you bake it. Hey, that's good. That's good. Okay, so going back to some folks that you like to watch, um, who is someone that you like to watch on digital media? Do you, Is there someone like on Instagram or YouTube or something like that that you like to get inspiration from? Mm. Um, I love everything... Erin McDowell does. I think she's just like super talented and I love seeing all of like her, like hearing the technicality behind everything is really cool. She Uh, makes everything so approachable too. Like, you know, like, I mean, she, she's, I swear to gosh, like 
I think, I mean, Dory mentioned her. I think Rosalie Bebera mentioned her. Like, she's got so many fans because she's so real, right? Yeah, she has like this, um, like an ability to get really deep and technical without ever being like, uh, like freak me out. Yeah. Yeah, like it doesn't. Like I feel like uh, she's she's just really good at explaining and showing, and it's not it doesn't feel intimidating. Yeah, some of the stuff that she does is pretty pretty crazy, you know, pretty advanced stuff for a home cook. Yeah, she's crazy. She's really talented. No, that's that's super cool. Okay, so my last question, my last question. I don't know. It doesn't have to have anything to do with cookies, but what is one of your favorite cooking tools? Okay, I, I'll give you two. Okay. On, on the savory side, it's an immersion blender. Yes. And I think it's because I'm just lazy. <laughs> uh, and like the idea of like transferring something out of a pot and then putting it back, it's just like, I can't. Um, but then on the baking side, this might be obvious, but it is a scale because really this like cup of flour thing, I remember there was a day when I'm like, scrap the book, I can't do this. Thing. Like this is too much for me. And so it's like weighing my- Give me my food. smelling salts. No, literally, I was like, so like this whole what is a cup of flour away thing has become like my whole new thing I want to preach to everyone is like a kitchen scale is the best. Oh, that's so awesome. No, I have I, I have to. I, I love using a scale. And of course, like doing my Weight Watchers and stuff, I always have a scale, but it's just so much better to use with baking. I, maybe that's yeah. we just have to keep on pushing towards it. Right. I know. It's like I could write another piece, but everyone's heard it by now. <laughs> Well, um, I think that, um, uh, what was it Rose said? Rose was like, she she has a, a wrote an essay called The Way to Bake, W-E-I-G-H, mm -hmm. right? So, well, Jesse, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm so grateful that you took the time the day after Thanksgiving and your early morning train ride and all that. So thank you so much for being on today. And it was really a pleasure to get to talk to you. No, thank you so much. I'm very honored you asked me to be on this. Yay, awesome. Well, congratulations on your beautiful book. And you have a safe and happy holiday season. No, you too. Okay, thank you. Isn't that fun, y'all? I just, I really love this book. So make sure to check it out. Um, you can win a copy by going to my Instagram feed. And then also make certain you can, um, it's available where all books are sold, right? So you can support um, you can support your local independent bookstores. That's always a, a great way to go. You can, of course, order it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all those folks. But really, truly, just a, a great cookie book. Um, uh, classics with some innovative um, updates. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a safe and joyful uh, holiday season, and I will see you next week. All right. Bon appetit, y'all.